Welcome back to this week's technical video. The usual plug first, if you haven't already subscribed, click that subscribe button now, ring the little bell next to it. That means you don't miss new videos. If you get a chance as well, give the video a thumbs up and leave me a comment with some feedback. I know it seems very trivial, but it does help drive traffic to the channel. And if you found this video useful, the chances are there's someone else out there who might as well. Anyway, on with the technical, and this week we are on cattle and specifically carving. I know that might seem a bit out of sync, pretty much all carving is wrapped up here in New Zealand, but for spring carvers in the northern hemisphere it's actually not that far off. We're also heading to cowboy country and no that's not because I've become obsessed recently with writing podcasts and no it's not because I've been watching too much Yellowstone. Granted both of those things are true. You may have heard me or another vet say this or something along these lines before, disease is a balance of protection and challenge. This is is certainly true for young livestock. An animal with moderate protection will be fine when the challenge is low, but if the challenge is high, that moderate protection is going to be overwhelmed. Maximizing protection in very young animals is often a lot to do with colostrum, and in fact, we covered this in a recent technical specifically about beef cattle and specifically how we still have a long way to go. The link to that is in the video description. So it's not all about protection. Managing the environmental challenge is also really important. Even when carving outdoors and for these systems clearly we're not going to bed down entire fields in straw nor are we going to spread disinfectant powder across entire carving paddocks. So how can we manage hygiene in this setting? It's worth remembering that most of the infections that lead to the big calf killers joint ill, navel ill, calf scours are actually normal inhabitants of the adult bovine. E. coli for example is a normal inhabitant of the healthy adult bovine gut. So these are ubiquitous they're not something we're going to eradicate. And vets and farmers in the Sand Hills region of Nebraska were struggling with just this issue. They ran an outdoor extensive carving system, but some farmers were really struggling with deaths from calf scours. They decided they needed to do something about it and so ended up designing a system which massively reduced the deaths or even eliminated the deaths from calf scours. They first looked at the US dairy industry where it was common practice to house calves in individual huts after those calves were lifted from the cows. Now this is a really key point. I said before that most of these bugs, most of these infections that calves suffer with are normal inhabitants of the adult bovine. Adult cows are shedding these in small amounts constantly. So in a given calving period, the first calves born are going to see a small amount, they're gonna see a small challenge, and the likelihood is they'll be able to deal with it. Their immune system will be able to deal with it. But because that immune system is still immature, it's still developing, the infections take advantage of this and end up multiplying much more than they otherwise would. This multiplier effect means these young calves end up amplifying the infections. They shed a lot more than the adult cows. That means the challenge suddenly becomes very high for the next calves born. And this cycle repeats with each cohort as the weeks of calving goes on, the challenge becomes more and more severe. By housing calves individually, dairy farmers were able to break this chain of transmission. Now, you've probably realized that this wasn't going to be a suitable practical approach for an extensive beef system. So instead of separating each cow-calf pair, they decided they would split the herd into cohorts based on when those cows calved. While I'm talking, I'm gonna bring up a diagrammatic representation of this. A lot of you vet students will probably have seen this before. The carving area will be divided up into a number of subdivisions. At the start of carving, all of the cows in the herd are in one subdivision. They're in there for about a week or two. Thereafter, they're moved on to the next subdivision, except the cows that have already carved and their calves. After another week, the uncarved cows are moved again onto the third subdivision, leaving behind the cows that carved in that second time period. This pattern continues with the calved cows and their calves dropped back each week as the youngest calf in each cohort reaches four weeks old beyond the major scours risk period. Those groups are commingled and mobbed back up. The exact execution on each farm is going to vary depending on a number of different factors. The calving period, the calving pattern, the weather, the ground conditions, fencing, you get the picture. But the key points are calves are only grouped with calves of a similar age and they are born into 
clean fresh paddocks. The maximum amount of time those subdivisions have had cows and calves on them contaminating the area is going to be a week. Compare that to a situation where you kept all the cows and calves together until the end of the calving period. Now a calving period might be six weeks, it might be nine weeks, it might be 12 weeks or even longer. That means calves are going to be exposed to older peers who are much, much, much older than them and the environment is going to be a lot more contaminated over those weeks. Using the Sandhills carving system means that while farmers can and should do everything they can to maximize protection for those calves, they can also manage the environment to minimize the challenge to those calves. The success of the Sandhills carving system is now detailed in many, many case studies. Now, most of the farms that I've worked with in the UK that happen to carve outdoors don't tend to have a problem with calf scours. I think that's because they tend to be working at very, very low stock densities. So that although yes, calves are exposed to older calves, the stocking density tends to be so low that the environmental challenge is diluted out over a much, much bigger area. What I really like about this system is that yes, on some farms, in some systems, it may be directly applicable, but actually what I like more about it is that it's a really good demonstration of a principle that really any livestock farmer could probably benefit from. If you can segregate young stock by age, you are going to reduce the impact of that multiplier effect, meaning that their younger peers are going to experience less disease challenge. That means improved animal welfare, it means reduced vet med spend, less time nursing sick calves with really quite little expense incurred. There will probably be a bit of electric fencing involved and there'll be a bit of time moving cows every week and that's probably about it. I think it's a really great reminder that the most elegant animal health solutions often don't come out of a bottle. That's it for this week. Don't forget to click that subscribe button, ring the little bell next to it if you want to. Leave me a comment with some feedback. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Have you seen, used, heard of the Sandhills carving system? If you have, let me know in the comment section. I'll see you next week, over and out.